So thank you all for being here. I'm so excited because I, if you've been following me on Instagram, just got back from Egypt. And when I was in Egypt, I taught about sacred sex and reverent intimacy through the lens of ancient Egyptian principles. So that was pretty wild because I had a lot of research to do on specifics of how ancient civilizations practice intimacy, practice relationships, what their view were was on relationships. So this was a really amazing, enlightening area of study for me. And I was fortunate enough to go and then teach um, on a 14 day excursion, all of these principles. So I've tried to condense lots of stuff in here for you all um, that I thought were the main points of being able to truly unleash the power of your relationship, your romantic relationships, and also relationships with other people. So hello, I'm Kat I'm, or Catherine. I'm an intimacy therapist and I specialize in nervous system regulation, emotional intelligence, and relational energetics. These are all things that we will cover throughout a little bit. I'll give you a little bit of um, information on them throughout, but these are my areas of expertise. They are, if you've never heard of these words, it's like word salad. What the heck do these things mean? So I'll be sure to explain it as we go. And the objective truly, um, just trying to siphon it down to just one specific objective is to help you learn to unleash the power of your relationship through the integration of ancient wisdom and nervous system regulation. So ancient Egyptians had this beautiful relationship to relationships. They saw all relationships as an opportunity for you to be able to see different parts of yourself and ascend through this life, this physical experience. So whatever blocks that you experience within your relationship are reflections of things that you can't see on your own. So the things that really truly trigger you about your partners or <clears throat> your romantic relationships have a lot to do with your relationship with yourself. Mm -hmm. So they saw relationships as a gateway to reach enlightenment within the self again because you can't see what you can't see right if you have no awareness that you might be um, an anxious person but your spouse is very anxious they're going to reflect patterns of behavior to you that you might not even know are present within yourself so first and foremost before we go continue I just want to drive home the point that the things that really irritate you about your partner are trying to teach you something about yourself so that you can blow through that block, deepen intimacy, and really create this container for empowerment in your relationship. They viewed the power of intimacy and sex as a really sacred and reverent act that connects you to the ability to radically change your life. So they knew that Within intimacy and sex, you can actually cultivate life force energy or sexual life force energy, which is the most potent energy of the entire universe. We know this because we can create life from this energy. So if you're not creating human life, you can use sexual energy, intimate energy to be able to direct this life force energy towards work towards health, towards creation. And it really truly does help to magnify or amplify these areas of your life effortlessly. They also did not view intimacy and sex as just being the physical act of sex. They saw intimacy and the creation of focusing on your relationship to yourself, your relationship to your partner as a way to really cultivate the life force energy outside of the physical connection. So let me say this another way. The more you focus on the mental, emotional side of your relationship, really truly connecting with your partner outside of that physical act of sex, you're putting this energy in almost like a cauldron. So it will improve your sex life, but it will also be there available to you as creative life force energy for you to then say, cool, I'm going to take all of this 
this energy, all of this um, creative life force, potent stuff and direct it towards an area of your life. In not only in ancient Egypt, but also in Tibetan Buddhism, in ancient um, Chinese medical practices, they also used and cultivated life force energy within yourself to then be able to direct this energy for healing in particular. So they would be able to, in very specific practices, which I help clients with in private sessions, is to facilitate or cultivate this energy that then you can use to direct towards a physical ailment. Let's say that you are have been sick lately or have back pain or some physical ailment that you want to heal, you can use and direct this energy to help heal that area. These are all ancient medical practices, um, not something that I learned in Western medicine by any means. We did not focus on the holistic approaches to healthcare, but I found that true healing actually resides in these really ancient um, medical practices, holistic healthcare practices. Um, the last bullet point on this slide is obstacles and conflict that are faced that you're faced with within the relationships were seen as opportunities for growth of the self and to experience deeper level of intimacy and connection. So again, your partner is going to mirror parts of you that you need to see um, as areas of development for yourself first and foremost. And once you move through those barriers, it helps you feel seen on such a deeper level, which improves intimacy and your ability to connect in your relationship. Um, additional principles. Oh. Bradley, is that you? No, not me. Hold on, I'm going to mute you. Oh, somebody. Julian, maybe. Here we go. Okay, there we go. Um, additional intimacy principles include that intimacy and sex were seen as in the same light as basic daily tasks that were necessary to maintain health and well-being. So they viewed these two areas of your relationship as just as normal as brushing your teeth, getting dressed, going to the bathroom, these daily functional tasks that you do on a daily basis were just part of normal conversation. So being asked about your sex life was not shameful. It was just a part of like your daily life. Um, it was a natural, positive and integral part of your human life. And relationships were seen as the source of sexual energy, which again, as I emphasized in the last slide, could be used to direct to cure various illnesses. It also had the power to connect you to the potency of spiritual transcendence. So they saw all of this life force energy as an opportunity to charge your energy body, which totally exists. It's this place of you that people can say, oh, you know, your aura or, oh, your vibe. It's like, there are things outside of just your physical vessel that you're able to direct this really potent energy to. And it was also used to help you gain health, wealth, and happiness. So the main point, the main reason that I decided to do this um, presentation is because what, like, how did we get so disconnected from this beautiful act that people or um, civilizations used to practice in terms of the potency and the power of relationships. I think it's because our world is so overstimulated. We have so much stress now and we're so disconnected from community. So you have work, finances, decreased emphasis on community, which means we're not in a closed knit community where you could say, hey, neighbor, can you watch my kids while I go do this? Everything is very separate. We are very isolated in our own little villages that are our homes, and we rarely talk to neighbors or rarely have that piece of community. There's also social media, which makes you dissociate from your immediate environment or compare yourself, the media in general. So the more that you're exposed to news events that are threatening, um, they activate your sympathetic nervous system, which on the bottom, your nervous system is overloaded with stress. The more that you are overloaded with stress, 
the more you actually don't seek intimacy and connection and sex. If you look at um, the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which is just basically a pyramid that shows how we prioritize things in our life, the main basis, the main, the basic um, level of what you are focusing on is always safety. So these triggers that are listed on this slide are all triggers that can activate that sympathetic nervous system and take you away from connection in your relationship. So what the heck is your nervous system? Your nervous system is your body's internal alarm system. It has roughly 40 miles of nerves within your whole system. So you basically look like the spaghetti noodle on the right over there where there's like all these spaghetti noodles. It's attached to your spinal cord and to your brain. And what this system does is it's your body's internal alarm system. So it's always on. It never turns off. It just turns down. It's the information highway that carries electrical signals to and from your heart and brain. It's always working to keep you safe and alive. Little micro things that happen to you. The system is always like, oh, are we safe or no? Are we safe or no? Are we safe or no? And just that mechanism, and it, it's so sensitive that it can kick you out of the ability to respond or be connected to your loved one. Also, this system is highly influenced by beliefs and past experiences that you've had. So this is pretty important because if you've had experiences, if you've been with your partner for a long time and the same thing keeps happening, the same thing keeps happening, all of a sudden you notice that when it starts to become the thing that keeps happening, your system already expects it to be happening. So then you, your body initiates a response that creates the same outcome that you've experienced in the past. So it basically takes all the experiences that you've had with your partner, puts it in a bucket and says, oh, this is similar. I need to act this way because I'm very smart. My body's very intelligent and I know how to predict the outcome of this situation. So it's a great system. However, it often needs to be upgraded, just like your iPhone needs to be upgraded, just like your computer software needs to be upgraded. But there's not lots of discussion about how and how to do that, why you need to do it, how it will help benefit your relationship and how it really truly will catapult your the power of your relationship into a positive direction. So I've talked about this <clears throat> on my social media. I talk about it a lot, but this is the path in which your nervous system responds to stressors. Human behavior is extremely predictable. If we look at how the vagus nerve or your nervous system responds to daily stressors. So you have this green zone on the bottom. That's the happy zone. That's the yes zone. That is the intimate zone. It's when you feel joyful in the present moment, grounded, curious, open, compassionate, mindful. This is the intimacy zone. And if just me saying, do you resonate with any of those feelings or how often do you feel connected to the environment, connected to others, safe, joy in the present moment? If you don't really, if you're not really saying to yourself, I don't feel those like all too often, then you might also note to yourself that this area might be a little bit smaller than the rest of the areas on this chart. So the squiggly line represents you being activated into the fight or flight response. So as soon as you feel frustrated, worried, anger, anxious, irritated, fearful, panicked, rage, anger, this is when you start to move away from connection and you prioritize safety. So if you notice, oh, on a daily basis, I'm pretty anxious, or I usually am pretty frustrated. You can also make the association that not only am I frustrated, but I'm also really disconnected in my relationship. Hmm. There's something to be curious about. If this is sustained over a long period of time, you will enter the blue zone, which is your freeze state. This is when people experience dissociation, numbness, shutdown, shame lots of these really heavy emotions. And so if you if you notice that you enter a state of freeze a lot, 
see how far away you are from the green zone and notice maybe if I'm this far away from the green zone, am I this far away from my partner? A really important thing to note about this is when you start to come down from these freeze states and enter into this fight or flight, it means you have to have more activation of these intense emotions, which can be really, really scary for people. So they end up kind of getting stuck in the, in the in-between, between being overwhelmed and being activated. And then it's frustrating because you feel overwhelmed, you have a lot of emotions, you don't know where to put them. So lots of times the coping mechanism of this is to suppress how you feel. So you can suppress through um, dissociating on social media, distracting yourself with alcohol, porn, sex, whatever substances, negative self-talk. There are various ways that you can kind of keep yourself stuck into these different freeze or fight or flight states, just because we don't do a great job globally of giving you tools and education to be able to create this beautiful green zone that we need in order to really, really unlock the potential of connection in your relationship. <clears throat> Again, this is, there's a lot of science included in this because I want you to feel like it's not just woo woo. It is science backed um, information and it's the way that we're headed in healthcare but it's you getting ahead of any sort of um, physical manifestation of illness. If you're not already de dealing with immune dysfunction or brain fog or difficulty concentrating or um, immune dysfunction, GI issues, any of those things are all related to how your nervous system either keeps you out of sync or in sync. So based upon the last slide, um, depending on how activated or how sensitive your nervous system is, can create an either an out of sync system on the left here or an in sync system on the right. So the more dysregulated that you are, the more your nervous system is saying like, not safe, not safe, not safe. And it almost kicks your whole system out of tune like an instrument, because again, the nervous system is an electrical system. And so the more signals that are being sent, the more dysregulated or the more out of sync this system gets. So the chronic activation of the system without the ability to go back to regulation leads to incoherence and out of sync system. This is where you start to see physical manifestations of different things, pain, again, lowered immune function, low libido, disconnection, brain fog, GI issues, any sort of secondary condition, it's always really beneficial to look at the functioning and the health of your nervous system. If you are out of sync, and this is like really resonating with you while you're listening, you also become really hypersensitive to stimuli. And so your fear-based or survival mode existence starts to become more relevant, right? It becomes, it happens more often, more frequent. Um, and this is really common, unfortunately, again, in our society, we've had so many things to deal with in the past couple of years that many people are existing in a more fear-based or survival mode existence, which no wonder why we're so disconnected in our relationships. Any questions so far before I continue? Because this is a lot of information, totally nerding out about it, but anything anyone has to ask. No. Okay. Um, your elect, your nervous system emits this bubble. Okay. This has been shown in science now that this aura or the vibe that you feel from somebody actually is a real thing. It's an electrical energetic circuit that starts at the level of your heart and it emits into the field around you. So you can notice that it's pretty big. It's this pretty big bubble. It's called a torus and it's emitting your emotional state. So however you're feeling, if you remember the map slide where you're like, if I, am I anxious or concerned? If you're feeling anxious or concerned on a daily basis, you are emitting that energy out into your field. And you can see that it's overlapping with somebody that's next to you. I chose this specific picture because it's representing if you're in a relationship and you're anxious, that means you're bleeding over your emotion into your partner's field. And then it starts to affect their field. And the opposite is true. If your partner's super overwhelmed, they've had a really bad day, they just have been angry, 
and they don't regularly practice self-regulation or they're not aware of this information as most people aren't, their mood, their vibe starts to negatively affect you and brings you down. So the vibe you emit is based off of your emotional state. Um, this bubble is called your electromagnetic field and you're constantly being influenced by others as you are influencing others by your emotional state. So this is vitally important because you, the, the size of your bubble actually starts to shrink depending on the vibrational level of your emotional state. I know that's a lot of information. I cover it a lot in private work. If you have more questions on it, you can always ask me, but depending on the level of your emotion, fear obviously feels like a pretty heavy emotion. Um, it's going to shrink your electromagnetic field. And what it does is it starts to pull energy inward because you go into survival mode. So you can't be given out energy when you're stuck in survival mode. You're like, I need to just take care of myself. So your electromagnetic field actually shrinks to focus on giving you the energy for survival. And what happens when that bubble shrinks is you start to pull energy from other people. So if you are currently in a relationship where you feel like, this person is an energy sucker. They just suck the energy out of me. They most likely are dealing with a really low emotional state where they're starting to pull energy from you. And again, this is always super important to take a, evaluate yourself. Am I in a low vibrational state? Am I actually sucking energy from people I love around me? Do I feel good to be around? So this is a huge self-reflective question. And also just to note that on a daily basis, however many people that you interact with, this is happening all the time. So if you interact with people who are in low vibrational states or they're very dysregulated, they're going to steal your energy. So you either have to have a choice if there's somebody you really love having an honest conversation with them so that they can start doing work on themselves. You can stop hanging out with the people who are sucking energy from you, or you can really focus not or always, you can always focus on really developing this electromagnetic field so that it doesn't really matter who comes into your space. You're so aware of the power of your electromagnetic field and you pour into this thing all the time with various modalities to help you feel good. Then you have lots to give. You have more patience for people. You have a desire for connection. You have the just the energy overflow to not feel so depleted by people who you do bump into that might not be at the same level of emotional regulation that you are at. Um, this is a good way you can take a screenshot of this. This is a good way to determine what is happening in your electromagnetic field or your bubble. If you're experiencing the lower half emotions, you know that your torus or that bubble is turned inward. So if you're someone who's like worries a lot on a daily basis, not only are you really disconnected from your um, relationship with yourself, with others, but you're also starting to suck energy in and really shrinking your power. You're shrinking your ability to influence others. You're shrinking your ability to connect with others. You're also creating incoherence in your body, which eventually will kind of hurt you physically as those physical manifestations catch up to the way that your mental emotional state affects your daily life. And if you start to reach for more positive emotions um, through self-regulation, through just self-awareness that this is even a thing, it starts to create synchronicity within your system. It starts to make your body in sync, working together. And when you feel like that, I promise you, you will start to feel the desire for more intimacy and connection in your relationship. Again, just one more graph just to totally prove to you that this is science. Any skepticism will hopefully be resolved with adding extra science into this, this presentation. But this is a graph by the HeartMath Institute, and they have they marry they um, measure heart rate variability during different emotional states. So on the left-hand side, if you are frustrated, you feel resentment towards your partner, anger, anxiety, apathy, or sadness, you can see that that little, the heart rate variability graph, um, this area here, 
or up here or down here is pretty erratic. So if your body was a fine tuned instrument and this was the way that it was showing you if it's in tune or not, it looks pretty out of tune. This is also where you would um, release pretty detrimental hormones, cortisol and adrenaline. Cortisol is like battery acid if it's in your system for a prolonged period of time. So if you notice that you have a high stress life, you're constantly pumping cortisol into your day. You're also probably really fatigued. You might feel burnt out. You might feel like completely overwhelmed. This is a good graph to check in with yourself. Am I frustrated and resentful? Am I angry, anger, angry or anxious? Am I sad? And this will kind of give you an inf more information on what's happening in your electromagnetic field, what's happening with your heart rate variability, and what's happen happening to your ability to stay connected, again, in your relationship with yourself, with life. On the right-hand side is what happens when you start to feel happiness, excited, love, appreciation, contentment, serenity. You start to move in a naturally coherent state where your heart rate variability is more predictable and all of your body systems can start to align to this more positive, uh, incoherent state. So just to drive this home, the power of your relationship, your capacity, your ability to, um, okay, Mike asked the question, what does ANS and DHEA mean? Um, let's go back to that slide. ANS is your autonomic nervous system. So autonomic nervous system is the fight or flight, fight or flight. Um, if, are you in survival mode or are you in rest or digest? That's the ANS. DHEA is actually an anti-aging hormone. So it's what become, what is released in the body. Um, when you start to control cortisol or remove cortisol from the equation, it's not being, um, activated or released so much and you start to feel love and appreciation in states of love and appreciation you start to release something called DHEA which is an anti-stress hormone it's also an anti-aging hormone happiness hormone organizing hormone so cortisol on the one hand is the negative and DHEA would be the more positive um, neurochemical that's released this is just to drive um, another point home is like, if you really truly want to unleash the power of your relationship, it really starts with you first and foremost, you having this awareness of what, how you're contributing or how you're depleting your relationship, the health of your relationship. If you're somebody that's like, man, I am really stressed, man, I am really disconnected. Then you're probably the person that's really contributing to the depletion or the not being able to tap into the potency of what the relationship can do for you in your life. And then on the top screen, you have these two bubbles. They're very supple. That's how we want to see the nervous system is supple and resilient. That really feeds into your capacity to grow and expand as a human being first and within the confines of your relationship. So these are just some points for you to take home um, from this presentation. Both people have to do the work. It takes two to tango, first and foremost. Everyone has to be take responsibility for their bubble, for their emotional state, because it does affect and bleed over into the other person's experience and vice versa. Relationships provide an amazing container to learn about yourself. You're always seeing a reflection of yourself in the other person even if it really, really, really makes you mad, there's something to learn there. Um, learning to play closer, pay, play closer attention to your um, nervous system and how it affects your relationship is vital in replenishing or depleting the dynamic, learning to pay closer attention. Um, but how your nervous system is either contributing to the positive experience or contributing to the negative experience of your dynamic um, continue to be curious about how that bubble is affecting the vibe of your relationship. How is your bubble affecting your daily life and your ability to connect to a stranger or somebody at work? Um, this is not only important for your relationship, but it's really, really, truly important for you to be able to feel and achieve happiness and health in your own life. Practice getting familiar with the green zone so you can rewatch this and just take a look at that zone. 
you can build up your green zone by first and foremost, being aware of how you feel at every moment. If you're not feeling super great and you notice a more negative emotion, what are some things that you can do? Little easy things, going for a walk, taking a deep breath, telling yourself, hey, it's okay, I'm safe in this moment. There are little things that you can do to really help to reparent yourself and build up that green zone so you always know where connection lives in your body. Um, being a mindful of how low vibes emotion affect your partner. This is huge. This is being respectful of your partner in taking responsibility for yourself, doing what you need to do in order to feel better so that you're positively influencing the dynamic. And again, taking responsibility for your part. You're both 50, you are both 50% responsible for the health of the dynamic. So if you liked this information, I'm launching a group on the 10th. It's nine weeks of a deep dive. So everything that we just talked about, but really getting granular about each concept, giving you lots of tools and knowledge and conversation starters. This is, it's highly encouraged to do this with your partner. If you're single, it's totally fine. You're going to be the best suited person for you, this conscious relationship that you are going to enter into. But if you have a spouse and you're like, I need help. I really want to do something to really help create more connection in my relationship. This is a really awesome opportunity to do so. Um, there's a date night included. It's filled with opportunities and ideas for date night. There's a text guide included, which really helps to give you conversation starters to deepen the discussion with your partner. We'll have a week, um, every single week, we'll do an hour group session. Again, it's a deep dive opportunity to ask questions. You'll get the recordings. Um, you'll have weekly integration homework and exercises. Um, it's a huge opportunity to just start conversations that need to be had. They might be, you know, uh, overdue. And this is a perfect opportunity for it to be not super alarming because it's coming from me. It doesn't feel super um, triggering coming from a request you're making. So just an opportunity for deepening connection and really doing the work to see positive and sustainable changes in your relationship. These are ways that you can contact me. Um, if you're not already following me on Instagram, you can email me. My website is just in, uh, intimacyacademy.org. Um, and thank you for being here. If there's anyone that has any more questions, I'm going to stay on for a couple more minutes, but I will be sending you the recording and then opportunities for signing up for the group if you're interested, but feel free to email me or DM me however you want to get in contact with me to ask any questions that you have. So thank you for coming. <laughs> anyone have any questions? I'm unmuting you, Bradley. Well, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you have any questions? No. No? Okay. No questions. Thank it was you. good. Thanks, Julian. Thanks, Kat. Yeah, thanks, Amber. Oh, I don't have my video on. But <laughs> there we go. I don't see you, but I, I hear you. Hey, Julian. Do you have any questions? No, I just wanted to say thank you because it's really important. I feel so disconnected sometimes. And it's good to know that, okay, we we can fix it. We can do something about it. Yeah, so, for sure. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Usually, I, I, I usually forget about myself. <laughs> Uh, I'm having issues with my self care, and I I need to be aware what I that I need to be not only in shape but um, I don't know a uh, uh, more balance I think so I can bond with my wife. Yeah. So, thank, thank you. you. For, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. The. We, we put a lot of emphasis on physical wellness, right? Like you need to go to the gym, you got to work out, but there's no emphasis on the mental, emotional side of, you know, mental, emotional training. 
Mm -hmm. So thank you for saying that. I think, um, can you hear me or no? I can hear you, yes. The bubble uh -huh. around each person, the fear and the, the other, um, and the love goes through the computer too. Yeah. So that, I, that field, you can, you can feel it. Yeah, you can feel it whenever, you, I guess, yeah, virtual space too. It's more of a frequency, tapping into that frequency. Yeah. Mike said, my wife and I both work high stress jobs and we sometimes both end up in the low vibe zone. How can we both sync up? Good question, Mike. Lots of this is taking a little bit more of a deep dive. Um, if she hasn't watched this or she's not with you, have her watch this just so she can see kind of like what is going on behind the scenes. And that might even just initiate conversations that you can have together about, hey, take responsibility for my own bubble and how I'm influencing you. Um, also, when you're in the low vibe zone, it's probably an indication that you need to take a vacation um, if you can or carve out some time to really disconnect from the stress of the world. I know that's really challenging, but it's super important because if your nervous system is trying to tell you, hey, we are overwhelmed, we are overwhelmed. Um, and if you don't take a break uh, voluntarily, your nervous system will cause a reason for you to take a break. So it will make you sick. It will make you so fatigued that you're like, I can't do this anymore. So in the low vibe zone, good opportunity to check in with her, check in with yourself. Hey, do we need to take some time to disconnect from the stress of our you know, our life and really reprioritize ourself. I hope that helped. Any other questions? Thank you all for being here. The group starts on the 10th. I'm going to be running a couple of them throughout the year, but um, really good opportunity for you to learn a lot more about what we talked about today and ha have it be a little bit more personal towards what you're currently going through. So Reach out if you need anything, and thank you again for being here. Thank you, Catherine. See you later. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye.